New Mexico's Attorney General announced earlier this week that Bernalillo County District Attorney Kerry Brandenburg will not face charges related to that case involving her son. The Albuquerque Police Department investigated Ms. Brandenburg last year and said there was evidence that she tampered with witnesses in an alleged burglary case with her son. Now, the Attorney General Hector Baldera says there isn't evidence that that in fact happened. He criticized the APD investigation. Let's get into this one along with some other recent stories on APD. With our line of opinion panelists, I'm joined by Laura sanchez Rive from Sanchez Legal Solutions, Rob Nikoleski from Watchdog.org, Daniel Foley, former New Mexico House Minority Whip, and Antoinette Cedillo Lopez from Enlace Comunitario here in Albuquerque. Now, Daniel, I'm going to start right with you. The okay. DA uh, had a bunch of things thrown at her uh, this past season, so to speak. But let me talk about this case specifically. Is it your opinion that APD tried to ding this woman with something that just wasn't ne never going to stick with the minimal of investigation? And if so, why did they do this? I, I, don't, I don't believe that's what happened. Okay. Now, you know, obviously, Gene, I, I, I wouldn't vote for Kerry Brandenburg. I mean, we've got to make that clear as sure. a Republican. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe that this is just one of those perfect storms. I believe she probably reached out as a parent, saying, if I make restitution, can we be okay? Mm -hmm. People that she reached out to probably saw an opportunity, went to police and say, hey, I feel threatened. And the police are left with no opportunity. I think at the end of the day, cooler heads prevailed. And, you know, I, I don't think that she was trying to use her position as the district attorney to influence the outcome of what her son did. I think mm -hmm. she was using her position as a mom. Gotcha. Laura, let's touch on that. You know, um, it turned out in Mr. Balderas's report that there were two cases where her son, Ms. Brandenburg's son, had broken in and burgled and caused felony uh, charges and all this kind of thing. It turns out in the report that, in fact, Ms. Brandenburg approached the second couple where the son had broken into their home. They had already contacted the police mm -hmm. and they had already named her son as the sole suspect. Right. But APD was ha having us to believe that Ms. Brandenburg was trying to cut that off to keep them from getting right. to the police. Why didn't APD let us know that beforehand? This seems pretty simple to me. Right. Um, you know, this is all very, I mean, there's so much out there in the public about this, and, yeah. and I think it's interesting to read the original sources first and then, you know, come to conclusions. But mm -hmm. what I would say is, you know, Attorney General Balderas' letter was very clear mm -hmm. that um, while he didn't find enough evidence for criminal charges, mm -hmm. he did think that there was uh, some semblance of impropriety in the actions that, that Carrie Brandenburg mm -hmm. took. Mm -hmm. um, as district attorney, you know, she's not supposed to get involved in situations like that when her son is you know, the defendant, that's right. just a conflict, a yeah. very clear conflict. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, what I take from that is, you know, she, she needs to exercise better judgment. She mm -hmm. is, you know, a parent first. Um, and if that's the case, then you have to f appoint a special prosecutor as soon as you can mm -hmm. um, and extricate yourself from any kind of um, situation. Mm -hmm. Now, APD wasn't completely blameless either. Right. You know, APD made some mistakes, and I think Attorney General Balderas, uh, his investigation found that um, their timing was politically motivated. Now, uh, you know, as of this taping, mm -hmm. yesterday morning, um, they, uh, or at the time that this airs, will be yesterday morning, mm -hmm. Thursday morning, mm -hmm. um, Carrie Brandenburg uh, came out with a, with a request to the feds that she be, that that portion of it be investigated, the part about p being politically motivated right. uh, be investigated further. Mm -hmm. Balderas found that there was nothing, you know, n nothing in terms of criminal charges there, but he did um, conclude that there was political motivation. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think it cuts the way that Kerry was, um, or that uh, the DA was, um, is asking the feds to do. So gotcha. what he said was that it seemed like they basically um, were taking into account her reelection coming up, because right. it was in November, That's right. and that you know, these kinds of charges might end her political career. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't come out with the charges and, and turn it over to the, investigation, to the AG's office until late November after the election. Right. She's asking that it be politically, you know, uh, the political motivation be investigated because it cuts against her, mm -hmm. me meaning that they were basically it was retribution because she was bringing charges against the police officers. Mm -hmm. So there's some question there, and I think it will be interesting to see if the feds actually do Careful investigate what further. Well, there you go. Um, Rob, Laura just touched on something. Ms. Brandenburg did not come out unscathed. Let me read you the, mm -hmm. the bit from the attorney, uh, from the, uh, Mr. Balderas' report here. Upon learning of a criminal investigation involving her son within her jurisdiction, that's interesting to me, District Attorney Brandenburg should have immediately arranged for a special prosecutor and refrained from personally engaging potential witnesses and alleged victims in this matter involving her son. She should have also notified the Albuquerque Police Department that she was aware of the investigation and that she had made arrangements for a special prosecutor. That seems pretty simple to me, that mm -hmm. if you're a district attorney, you know those yep. beats. You yep. just know them. Right. 
Yeah, that mm -hmm. the 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 two words that come to my mind about this entire situation with uh, the DA's office and the APD is mm -hmm. institutional warfare. I mean, there is obviously a lot of tension between these two sides, mm -hmm. and. I don't really think that, uh, that that either side has really covered themselves in glory in this situation. Mm -hmm. You know, the, just what you mentioned with Ms. Brandenburg, she should have known that right. you, you can't. I know that you're a mom first, but you've get you can't you've got, got to recuse yourself from the situation. But APD is hardly blameless in mm -hmm. this thing, mm -hmm. especially to me. The really critical point was, of according to uh, Hector Balderas's report, the police report on Ms. Brandenburg was done July. That's right. It didn't come out until much, much later. So it seemed to me that they Late were October, sitting on this right. and saying, well, we've got something on her. Mm -hmm. And if for whatever reason we don't like what she's doing, mm -hmm. then we'll spring it. The other thing that really bothered me about this, too, was it got released to the public before it got, right. before Hector Balderas got to That's it. Right. So I think both sides have a lot of explaining. Right. On that gap, that July to November gap, Laura mentioned that as well. Mm -hmm. Is there any other way to look at this beyond, beyond politically mo political motivation? It's, well, it's hard. Chief I, Eden has says there's a process. I and, agree. You know it looks, I mean? it, you know, it appears that way, but you never know what's in, in somebody's head. Yeah. But the other thing that I think about is they were sitting something on something that was really nothing because it didn't rise to the level of mm -hmm. criminal behavior, you know, of violating a crime. Mm -hmm. um, the most the AG called it was appearance of impropriety. Mm -hmm. I agree, she should not have been contacting the witnesses, mm -hmm. but it also appears that they were Facebook friends and personal acquaintances, and I think, you know, the mother got it, got the best of her. Mm -hmm. She was talking, you know how Albuquerque is, it's such a small place. Sure. She was talking to friends. Sure. Yeah, the other Absolutely. twist of this as well mm -hmm. is that, I mean, before, the Carrie Brandenburg was getting criticism from a lot of people who had criticism about APD right. that she was basically, you know, letting you know get letting, letting them off the hook. That's right. Now suddenly, as I That's mentioned, right. it's institutional warfare. I mean, it's open. It's open season. You know, That's I right. think That's I think right. at the end of the deal here, though, the one that you got to look at that it's interesting besides the situation is how the attorney general handled it. Mm -hmm. You know, Hector Balderas, I think, did a, a really good job in of addressing both sides of the parties. Mm -hmm. You know, he, mm -hmm. he was able to write a letter that, you know, conservatives can say, well, he kind of smacked her. Mm -hmm. Liberals can say, well, he didn't do too much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it just is an example of, of the talent mm -hmm. that Hector had a state auditor. He's going to continue to have and why I think Republicans are watching him with a very close eye as mm -hmm. the next gubernatorial race rolls around. Interesting there. Appreciate that. Another point here on APD this week, Laura Sanchez. Interesting. We've had so much APD related stuff. It turns out there's some question about the certification of officers right now that could affect a lot of cases out there. And Ms. Brandenburg, again, is looking at this, the district attorney. What was your immediate sense of that when you heard that? I've heard some folks say disgruntled employee that's been sitting on this thing, you know, all that kind of thing. Yeah. How, did you, how did you parse well, it I when think, you heard it? You know, there's sort of two sides to it, but there's, mm -hmm. the truth's always somewhere in the middle, right? That's right. <laughs> um, Sometimes. You know, I think it's, it's just one more problem that we need to address and that I think the city really needs to get a handle on. Mm -hmm. You know, in addition to that, there was also a video this week about some police, potential police treatment of a Right. of a body, a, a dead person, um, right. which is really troubling if you saw the video. Right. Um, and then the other thing that also came out is the city council um, having the, this rolling quorum mm -hmm. type of meetings with, uh, with Dr. Ginger, who's mm -hmm. the, um, the monitor who's been appointed or going to be appointed by the DOJ. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that really problematic mm -hmm. to not have open, open meeting, to not um, uphold the open let's meeting. Take the, let's take that one on as a group, because I like that one a little bit better too. Um, Set that up just a little bit more. He was it, the idea of of Fogg and others mm -hmm. saying there should have been more transparency here, mm -hmm. and all these meetings should have happened in the regular public forum of City Council. Now City Council is saying we tried to do that, but DOJ is leaning us on us saying there's a Fed local conflict here. Yeah. It, what did you make of that idea that the federal stuff supersedes? Yeah, the local and there's stuff? I mean it's muddy because there are so many attorneys at play, and right. there's federal folks and local folks. So we have, mm -hmm. um, you know, the the. Um, U.S. Attorney Damon Martinez, um, you know, and I, I think he's excellent at his job, you know, definitely has, you know, knows his area, I think is very trustworthy. We have Jessica Hernandez, you know, also very good at her job, but clearly they represent very different roles, very different parties in this whole situation. Mm -hmm. And I think the, uh, the city council has an obligation to, you know, uphold their own open meetings laws mm -hmm. and to make sure that they are following the rules in terms of any information that they hear. They have an obligation mm -hmm. to their constituents. Sure. You know, uh, Antoinette, uh, they're saying these were briefings. 
Mm -hmm. and there were no decisions made, so therefore we're not violating anything on the Sunshine Act. We're just it's, being briefed. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's all a matter of interpretation. Yeah. It's just, and, and it, it isn't clear. The The rules aren't clear. Yeah. I, it looks like they were trying to skirt the rules, though. Okay, you know, okay. It just, Rob, oh, go, go, I'm sorry. Because it does look rolling. It does look like a rolling meeting. A rolling yeah. quorum, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Yeah. It does to me, too. The, the question I've got is, first of all, why did Mr. Ginger blow off the city council to begin with? Right. And in his defense, I think it would be interesting to take a look at what other cities like Portland who had these people who are sure. who are in position same as Mr. Ginger did did he or did, did those previous people in other other uh, cities did they address right. city council or did they say well this is an open investigation so I can't talk sure. so I mean I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt but that's this whole thing started because he wouldn't go to city that's council that's right that's right what, now what do you make of the, the idea I put to Laura that their defense is there were federal regulations that supersede they don't. the local needs ah you do you want to take the one on yeah, Good. They absolutely they, okay. their federal regulations don't supersede the city councilors mm -hmm. How they operate their investigation is their own deal. Mm -hmm. The feds can follow their own rules. The city council can very easily say, we can't be here. Gotcha. We can't have a rolling quorum. You can't do this. They also have a very simple process. Mm -hmm. This has to deal with personnel. The Open Meetings Act let them come together for a public meeting. Mm -hmm. We got this meeting, make the announcement. We got to go in to discuss matters of personnel. They could go back and have an eight-day meeting and then come back out and say, does everybody agree nothing was right. decided? Right. Yes, 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 and away we go. Yeah. So I, I, there's the, the Open Meetings Act gives plenty of room for this type of stuff. I just think that this is a discussion. You know, the, the far bigger question I think that we should be talking about Please. is we're on story two. Mm -hmm. And both stories involve APD. Right. I mean, it's just, it's just. This is the gift that never stops giving. I That's mean, right. I think, I think Please. Dan's right. And you know, those executive sessions mm -hmm. can be called upon for personnel issues. Now, this isn't exactly a personnel issue because it's a contract. Or legal matters. Or it could be a legal matter. Sure. There could be, you know, if the litigation's involved. This is one of those things where I think there's enough, you know, information, enough, th at least that we know of publicly, sure. where they could have used one of these other exceptions, and they probably should have, rather than having this rolling quorum, uh, because it, it just raises more questions than it answers. And you would yeah. think with all the problems that exist mm -hmm. with APD, mm -hmm. with the city council, with the mayor, that somebody, right. somebody would be stepping forward and saying, put the brakes on, That's right. we have constituents, That's right. let's well, do you know, this right. Yeah. Council yeah. member, uh, Co Councilman Ray Garduño did mm -hmm. that. I mean, he basically mm -hmm. refused to participate and That's said, I owe it to my constituents to do this at open meetings That's and right. everybody else participated in this now I think you I read from Councilor Lewis that he also said well I was invited to a briefing you know he maybe didn't ask the right questions in terms of whether this was going to be a rolling quorum but right. I think once you're in that situation as a mem you know member of that council mm -hmm. you should basically have the presence of mind and the obligation feel the obligation to do this in public and not participate especially when you've case. been there for more than six especially, months. especially right. on this issue it would think everyone's looking at with yeah. hard eyes on council the nation and so. I mean yeah, the nation, this, sure. this is absolutely this, the articles have been written in the New York Times I mean periodicals have written right. TV chat That's national right. you don't want to I mean this up. yeah this is yeah. something you, you could maybe help elevate us to the yeah. front of the line yeah. instead of to the back of the line yeah, that's a good point up next a look inside how detentions in Guantanamo Bay have changed how the world sees the US government